Hello, today I have a new brand to look at, Shargeek. This is the first for the channel, and I'm starting with the power bank. This was second place in a poll I ran, and it is the Storm 2 Slim. With its clear plastic case and more modern feature set, I expect it to win. Overall, this device is somewhat new, and the reason it gets a chance is to examine if it's all looks or if the performance matches the claims and this power bank can really deliver the watts. I will put it through the All Things One Place testing gauntlet to find out if it can achieve top marks. We'll go through each of the features and functions of this power bank to see if it meets the claims on the box. In this series, I try to answer the question, which power bank do I want to get? The videos get technical, so hang on and always ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and compared to near competitors. In this video, the power bank will be reviewed to find out the charging capabilities and help you make an informed buying decision. This is my third power bank, although I started testing some others. I started with a bang with some really impressive options, so there will be a lot to check to see if this can keep up. If you want more videos like this, subscribe to catch these videos. If you want to help support the channel, there's a link to my Patreon super button and the website down in the description. Thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. This is the Shargeek Storm 2 Slim Power Bank model STM2E-1. It is a 20,000 milliamp hour power bank with two ports. Upon opening up this unit, you can see the power bank is of a rectangular shape. It is on the larger side for the capacity. The power bank comes with a 100 watt capable USB-C to C cable. This will get tested another day. It comes with a carrying case also. The user manual is what I would call functional. It spends a lot of time explaining the menu system and all the modes of operation. This doesn't have a ton of ports, but it is still nice to have a little infographic to talk about what each USB port can do and how power sharing works. Lots of things to check. The cells are of the 21700 size. The power bank seems solidly built. The power bank bears the CE mark for its compliance testing. It lacks the UK CA mark or any US or Canada markings. I see a PSC mark, but I don't see a specific listing with that, so I'm not sure if it carries any meaning. It is adorned with a few extra marks like airline safe, which we can check. Let's get into some weights. The cable that comes with this weighs 47 grams. The packaging for this weighs 195 grams, heavy. The power adapter weighs 449 grams, which is about average. In comparison with other tested devices, this is on the upper end for energy and power density. If you consider the claimed capacity, this power bank is actually on the lighter side. I wonder if it'll hold up. I pulled this from the Amazon listing, and they don't give a huge list of devices that this thing can charge. The claims devices includes things like lots of laptops and phones and the GoPro. They do claim it will charge the Nintendo Switch, but I don't have one of those to test. There are mentions of overheating though, and we will get into that in detail later on. This power bank has two USB ports for output and one shared port for input. The USB-A port supports various protocols. Most popular are the quick charge or QC modes, which gets you a maximum of 30 watts. The QC port has five, nine, and 12 volt modes. The QC port is independent of the USB-C port and is active whether the other port is charging, discharging, active, or not. So there is no renegotiation with this power bank and it does support pass-through and does not interrupt power, so this can function as a UPS. Only a 30 watt one, but it can do it. The USB-C port is more modern and uses the much more popular power delivery output. The power delivery specification allows each USB-C port to deliver fixed output voltage modes or variable output voltages as your device needs. In this case, the power bank provided 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volt fixed output voltage modes. Not bad, and in line with most modern devices. The other modes available are PPS or programmable power supply mode. This varies the output voltage to maximize charge efficiency. This port offers a PPS mode of 20 volts and can go up to 100 watts also. This should be able to charge at 5 amps and 11 volts. And I'm not sure the protocol implementation exactly, but it should be able to super fast charge Samsung devices. As mentioned, on every device plug and unplug, the power delivery does not renegotiate. In this case, plugging in a USB-A device will not cause the USB-C to renegotiate. Charging and discharging change over seamlessly, which is a nice feature. This means the power management software is a little more advanced than some other power banks, and this isn't specifically hindered during use. The voltages all stayed within the tolerances of the USB power delivery specification, which is nice to see. The display has a sharp but tiny text on it. It is bright and it's easy to read, but it may struggle a bit with overcrowding or overload of information to the user. The display is a little inaccurate. They give you decimal places of watts, but it doesn't appear to be accurate enough to show you, so it could be improved. The voltage and current it displayed did not line up with the USB tested voltages and currents, and one tended to be high, the other tended to be low, and it 
wasn't entirely consistent. It will give a rough indication of what is happening though. The navigation of the menu is fairly simple. The user manual spent a lot of time explaining this, but the easiest way to figure it out is just pushing the button. It basically uses a push and a push and hold as the two options to navigate the menu and switch to different modes. The device does not have always on output voltage. If the load is light enough, the device will turn off the output after a few seconds. There is detection though, so any new plug-in will turn the device back on. I didn't see any press and hold functionality. Pushing the power button again won't wake the port back up either so you do have to unplug and plug back in. The display stays on so your battery will drain, but the port shuts off. This doesn't make a lot of sense. This may struggle to charge things like smartwatches, so keep an eye out for that. Power banks do some kind of marketing nonsense when it comes to battery capacity. In this case, 20,000 milliamp hours, which is a big number. We can see how many cells are in this thing, so we can deduce that they are each 5,000 milliamp hour battery cells. I'm not gonna go into a ton of depth here, but if this doesn't make too much sense, ask. Basically, the unit of energy we care about is watt hours, like your electricity bill. Talking about a capacity in terms of milliamp hours essentially only gives you a piece of the picture, and since the voltage of the battery is a variable, it tells you nothing. What we need to see is watt hours. They do print this in tiny text on the bank, but it could be a little more clear. Also knowing the usable capacity would be a big improvement since the basic math to go from watts to usage time for any device is very easy. This is an example of providing the least information possible. So we have the battery capacity of 72 rated watt hours, a high capacity, but not a huge portable power bank. I measured the output capacity at 57 watt hours. With the losses for converting the voltage to the output, you end up with about 79% of the stored energy being sent to the output. This is okay, not setting the world on fire, but it may set itself on fire. We'll get into that in a bit. The charging is okay, so the overall system efficiency with a 90% efficient power adapter ends up around 73%, which is about average. So using this power bank wastes 27% of the energy you pay for to charge your device. That number will be worse with less efficient power adapters. Charging time hit the claim dead on at 1.5 hours to full charge. It starts at 65 watt charging and holds that for almost until the power bank is fully charged. After a 10 minute break in the middle to cool down though, after 30 minutes or so. If you left it to charge, it would sit with the warning on the screen about overheating and wait for you to clear it to start charging again. This isn't so great. It can charge in that time if you hang out with it and give it a break halfway through. The cell capacity did always show fairly accurately on the display. I do think it would be nice if the usable watt hour capacity was stated as well. I doubt anyone will do this because it is a variable, but an average value could be listed or a greater than some number of watt hours. Stating the capacity honestly will let people calculate real use times instead of expecting 72 watt hours and getting 57 usable. The thermals on this power bank during both charging and discharging were unstable and continuously climbed. The unit casing continued to get hotter even after overheating, around 53 degrees C while charging and 60 degrees C while discharging, and the case never got to the internal reported temperatures. For a battery, I would call this hot and warmer than other power banks. In this case, the battery cells get too hot and the electronics get too hot anywhere over 40 watts of capacity. This even overheated during the 65 watt charging cycle. I did have one instance where the battery capacity suddenly went to zero and then came back to 100% when I tried the discharging. In terms of the marketing claims, this power bank does 50-50. We know the real capacity of this device and the claimed charging capabilities from some data online. This device meets half of the basic marketing claims for charging times for devices. This is a one day device if it doesn't overheat first. The power bank can run for about 1.5 hours with a 40 watt load. This is average. If you take the power level up anymore, it overheats and runs for significantly less time. This does not bode well for the longevity of this product. And onto overload testing. As with any power adapter, we can push this power bank to its limit to see how many watts it can deliver. We are expecting to see the device safely shut down in the case of a situation like a short circuit or a broken cable. I went ahead and tested the various ports and options on this adapter to find the overload limit. It looks like this device shuts down safely within reasonable limits. After any overload, the power bank requires you to unplug and plug in the port, no recovery. Okay, overall, this power bank has one major issue I found. It overheats. It overheats really quickly. It claims too much power out and power in for the thermal management solution and therefore has problems trying to keep up. This device does have better management of the USB ports, although there are only two. It does keep both ports on independently and regardless of charging and discharging status. Pass-through works from C to A ports. 
The screen and menu system are reasonably good, but I do worry about the screen getting damaged because it doesn't have any protective cover. The claimed charging rate of 130 watts is just way beyond what this thing can do continuously. 40 watts in or out is what it can do within a 20 degree Celsius environment. This capacity isn't anything special. The USB-C port can deliver 100 watts, but the time it can do it for is very limited. 10 minutes. The price point is extremely high, around 200 US dollars as of 2023. It isn't cheap, but it still goes on sale fairly regularly. But even as of writing, $160 for this is way too much for a clear case and poorly thermally managed product. I don't expect a lot of life out of a device with these thermal issues, but it depends on use. If you only use a 30 watt charger and only ever charge a single phone, then it will probably be fine in the long run. One question power banks always have is about travel on a plane or not. This power bank is well under the 100 watt hours, so it technically can. One thing I didn't see on this power bank is a US or Canada safety listing. This is a new category, so we'll start to see this on power banks. It looks like this one doesn't have that specific mark though, but it does have a CE and a PSE, but no country. After all that, I leave the decision up to you as to whether or not this is the one you want. It is a modern adapter and it has a cool see-through design that looks good. It can deliver a lot of power, but it seems to lack good thermal management, so it overheats in almost every situation above 40 watts. In a warm environment, this is only going to happen even faster and at even lower power levels. This is a problem. I have another power bank I'm going to look at now that is a quarter the price of this one. It doesn't claim as much power delivery or as fast of charging, but it also doesn't overheat. That video will be out soon. This item has questionable Amazon review stats. There's an alarming number of one stars in there, so check it out. Many talk about the overheating problem. This won't see a lot of use by me because it doesn't really function at the level I needed to perform at. Thanks for watching. Next week, the current plan is to do another power adapter or two. There is also a schedule on my website of upcoming videos. I'm getting closer on the rating system for these power banks. Check the description for affiliate links. Click it and buy something else. Thanks again and goodbye.